In today's video, let's see the regulation for emergency training and drills. The information in this video is sourced from SOLAS, Chapter 3 Life Saving Appliances and Arrangements, Part B, Requirements for Ships and Life Saving Appliances, Section I Passenger Ships and Cargo Ships, Regulation 19 Emergency Training and Drills. This regulation applies to all ships. Familiarity with safety installations and practice musters. Every crew member with assigned emergency duties shall be familiar with these duties before the voyage begins. On a ship engaged on a voyage where passengers are scheduled to be on board for more than 24 hours, musters of newly embarked passengers shall take place prior to or immediately upon departure. Passengers shall be instructed in the use of the life jackets and the action to take in an emergency. Whenever new passengers embark, a passenger safety briefing shall be given immediately before departure, or immediately after departure. The briefing shall include the instructions required by Regulations 8.2 and 8.4, and shall be made by means of an announcement, in one or more languages likely to be understood by the passengers. The announcement shall be made on the ship's public address system or by other equivalent means likely to be heard at least by the passengers who have not yet heard it during the voyage. The briefing may be included in the muster required by paragraph 2.2. Information cards or posters or video programs displayed on ships video displays may be used to supplement the briefing, but may not be used to replace the announcement. Drills, drills shall, as far as practicable, be conducted as if there were an actual emergency. Every crew member shall participate in at least one abandoned ship drill and one fire drill every month. The drills of the crew shall take place within 24 hours of the ship leaving a port if more than 25% of the crew have not participated in abandoned ship and fire drills on board that particular ship in the previous month. When a ship enters service for the first time, after modification of a major character or when a new crew is engaged, these drills shall be held before sailing. The administration may accept other arrangements that are at least equivalent for those classes of ships for which this is impracticable. Crew members with enclosed space entry or rescue responsibilities shall participate in an enclosed space entry and rescue drill to be held on board the ship at least once every two months. Abandoned Ship Drill Each abandoned ship drill shall include Summoning of passengers and crew to muster stations with the alarm required by Regulation 6.4.2 followed by drill announcement on the public address or other communication system and ensuring that they are made aware of the order to abandon ship. Reporting to stations and preparing for the duties described in the muster list checking that passengers and crew are suitably dressed checking that life jackets are correctly donned. Flowering of at least one lifeboat after any necessary preparation for launching starting and operating the lifeboat engine operation of a DAV it's used for launching life rafts. A mock search and rescue of passengers trapped in their staterooms and instruction in the use of radio life-saving appliances. Different lifeboats shall, as far as practicable, be allowed in compliance with the requirements of paragraph 3.4.1.5 at successive drills. Except as provided in paragraphs 3.4.4 and 3.4.5, each lifeboat shall be launched and maneuvered in the water by its assigned operating crew at least once every three months during an abandoned ship drill. In the case of a lifeboat arranged for freefall launching, at least once every three months during an abandoned ship drill the crew shall board the lifeboat, properly secure themselves in their seats and commence launch procedures up to but not including the actual release of the lifeboat. The lifeboat shall then neither be free fall launched with only the required operating crew on board, or alert into the water by means of the secondary means of launching with or without the operating crew on board. In both cases the lifeboat shall thereafter be maneuvered in the water by the operating crew. Fire drills should be planned in such a way that due consideration is given to regular practice and the various emergencies that may occur depending on the type of ships in the cargo. Each fire drill shall include, reporting to stations and preparing for the duties described in the muster list required by Regulation 8 starting of a fire pump, 
using at least the two required jets of water to show that the system is in proper working order. Checking of fireman's outfit and other personal rescue equipment Checking of relevant communication equipment Checking the operation of watertight doors, fire doors, fire dampers and main inlets and outlets of ventilation systems in the drill area Checking the necessary arrangements for subsequent abandoning of the ship The equipment used during drill shall immediately be brought back to its fully operational condition and any faults and defects discovered during the drill shall be remedied as soon as possible Enclosed space entry and rescue drills Enclosed space entry and rescue drills should be planned and conducted in a safe manner, taking into account, as appropriate, the guidance provided in the recommendations developed by the organization. Each enclosed space entry and rescue drill shall include Checking and use of personal protective equipment required for entry Checking and use of communication equipment and procedures Checking and use of instruments for measuring the atmosphere in enclosed spaces Checking and use of rescue equipment and procedures and instructions in first aid and resuscitation techniques Board training and instructions on board training in the use of the ship has life-saving appliances including survival craft equipment, and in the use of the ship has fire extinguishing appliances shall be given as soon as possible but not later than two weeks after a crew member joins the ship. However, if the crew member is on a regularly scheduled rotating assignment to the ship, such training shall be given not later than two weeks after the time of first joining the ship, instructions in the use of the ship has fire extinguishing appliances, life-saving appliances, and in survival at sea shall be given at the same interval as the drills. Individual instruction may cover different parts of the ship has life-saving and fire extinguishing appliances, but all the ship has life-saving and fire extinguishing appliances shall be covered within any period of two months. Every crew member shall be given instructions which shall include but not necessarily be limited to, operation and use of the ship has inflatable life rafts problems of hypothermia, First aid treatment for hypothermia and other appropriate first aid procedures Special instructions necessary for use of the ship has life-saving appliances in severe weather and severe sea conditions Operation and use of fire extinguishing appliances and Risks associated with enclosed spaces and onboard procedures for safe entry into such spaces which should take into account, as appropriate, the guidance provided in recommendations developed by the organization Onboard training in the use of TAVIT launched life rafts shall take place at intervals of not more than four months on every ship fitted with such appliances. Whenever practicable this shall include the inflation and lowering of a life raft. This life raft may be a special life raft intended for training purposes only, which is not part of the ship has life-saving equipment such a special life raft shall be conspicuously marked. Records, the day when musters are held. Details of abandoned ship drills and fire drills, enclosed space entry and rescue drills, drills of other life-saving appliances and onboard training shall be recorded in such logbook as may be prescribed by the administration. If a full muster, drill or training session is not held at the appointed time, an entry shall be made in the logbook stating the circumstances and the extent of the muster, drill or training session held. Thanks for watching. Hope oh, you like this video. Please share with your friends and subscribe to Marinora for more such videos. If you have any queries or comments, drop it in comment box.